Today we're going to talk about light meters, how to use them, how to read them. Let's take a look at our flash meter, what we need to use on it and how we can manipulate it. So I'm going to turn it on and you'll see a bunch of numbers on the screen here and a bunch of different things. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit this mode button and it's going to cycle through some different modes until it gets to the one that uh, has the little lightning bolt icon on it. Now, you're going to see some different numbers also. You're going to see over here you have like a 60, for instance, and then you have a zero, and then up top you have a 160 for ISO. So the way the light meter works is we tell it what we want to use for our shutter speed and our ISO, and then it takes a sample and tells us what aperture we should use. So let's just say that we want to shoot at 1 125th of a second instead of 1 60th of a second. On the side, we have buttons where we can, that just has like an up and down directional button. If I just click those up and down without um, pushing any other button, it's going to change the shutter speed. So uh, 125th is what we want to shoot at. Now, if I want to change the ISO, we've got a button down here that says ISO. You can push and hold that and you can click on it until we get to 100. And so now we've got our shutter speed set to 125th of a second, ISO 100. Then once it's time to use this to take a sample, there's a large button up here that will push and it will take a sample and it will tell us what the um, aperture needs to be. Now that we've learned how to you know, get our settings dialed into our light meter, now what we're gonna do is actually take a reading. So whenever we're taking a reading, a few things, you wanna make sure that this little dome is covering the light sensor. And uh, I wanna place this directly in front of my object, aim directly back at my camera. If I try to aim it like at a different angle, it's not gonna be very accurate. So I'm gonna set that down. And then on the side of the light meter, there's a trigger button. I'm going to click that and there's going to be an icon that blinks around that little flash icon. Then I'm going to take my trigger and I'm just going to pop my flash. And we're going to get a reading and we can see that it reads right here. It says 11 and then there's a little one off to the side. Let's forget about the one for a second. The 11 means F11. That means if we were to set our camera up, our aperture at F11 at 125th of a second shutter speed, ISO 100, we would have a proper exposure. But let's just say that we need to shoot at F8, okay? There's a bunch of reasons why we might wanna shoot at F8 or a different aperture, but let's say we need to shoot at F8. So now what's happening is this flash meter's told us we need to shoot at F11 if we want it to be properly exposed. Well, what do we need to do to be able to shoot at F8. We need to change the power of the flash at that point, right? So specifically, how much do we need to change the power of the flash? Well, if we want, if we're at F11 and we want to get to F8, you have to remember what the differences are in how many stops of difference there is there. From F11 to F8, there's one stop of difference. So that means we're gonna have to take our flash power down by one stop. Let's take a look at how we do that. On my trigger, I'm going to actually make the change. You're gonna see it happen on the light itself. So on my trigger, I'm gonna go down from one quarter to one eighth. Notice I don't have any remnants. It's not like one eighth plus 0.3 or anything like that. It's one eighth exactly because one eighth is exactly half as much power as one quarter was. They're one stop away from each other. So now that we have this set to one eighth, we're gonna take another reading and see if we get the reading that we want, which the reading we want is F8. So now that once we've adjusted the power setting on our flash, we're going to take another reading. So I'm gonna click the side button there again and pop the flash. Now you can see it reads at F8. So now what we've done is we've changed the power of the flash to match the aperture that we want to shoot. So 
This is how you match this. If you wanted the really shallow depth of field, you wanted to shoot at f2.8, let's say, then you would need to decrease the power on the flash. If you wanted the really deep depth of field and you wanted to shoot at f16, you would need to increase the power on the flash accordingly. So those are the basics of how to use a light meter to get a single flash setting that you want. Now, what if you wanted to use two flashes? So you don't want to just bring another flash in and just start popping the flashes. You, you have no idea what you're going to get and the lights are going to overlap on each other. So we need to be uh, strategic in how we set up the two flashes. So we're bringing in a second flash. Now, what we need to do is we need to meter it also. In order to effectively meter a second flash, you must turn the first flash off. If I have both of them going at the same time, they're gonna overwhelm the light meter. It's gonna take readings from both of them where they converge. So on my trigger, I'm gonna turn off the first flash and I'm gonna turn on the second flash. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take a reading. Notice that I am not moving the light, the light sensor at all, the light meter. I'm not gonna angle it towards the second flash. I still keep it angled directly back at the camera. Now I'm gonna take a, a, set, a reading. And that reads at 5.6.9. Because it says 0.9, that means it's one tenth of a stop away from being F8. All right, so let's just go ahead and say that it is F8. If this flash is F measured to F8 and the first flash is measured to F8, what's gonna happen is we are going to have perfectly flat lighting. We would also call that a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're gonna have no real discernible shadows on our object. It's just gonna all be filled in with flash. That's not an ideal scenario. Okay, for most things that we shoot, we want a little bit of shadow because we want, we're trying to show short, we're trying to show uh, shape and form. So how do we control how deep and dark our shadows are? Well, we control that by metering our second flash. Our first flash we know is metered to F8. We're gonna leave it alone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say this second flash, I want it to be metered to have exactly half as much light as the first flash. So what's half as much or twice as much? One stop different, right? So if we're metering this right now to F8 for the second light, what we really wanna do is we wanna have it meter out to F5.6, because that means that this light is now producing half as much light as the light that's producing F8. So on our flash, all we wanna do on our, our trigger is we're just simply going to decrease that flash power by exactly one stop. So it doesn't matter what the flash point says, right now this flash point happens to say 1 16th plus 0 0.03. So what we wanna do is we just wanna decrease that by one stop. So we're gonna come down to 1 32nd plus 0 0.3. And that's gonna be exactly half as much power as the other one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another reading. And if we've done it right, we should see F5.6. And we basically do what we see is F4.0.9, which is exactly one stop less than what we did have. So now what we have is two to one lighting where we have one light producing the proper amount of light at F8. The second light is producing half as much light at F5.6. That is true two to one lighting. What you don't wanna do in this situation is you do not want to increase one of the lights. If we had both of them measured to F8 and you increased one of them to F11, that would be a problem because now one side is gonna be overexposed, the other side is gonna be properly exposed. We don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is underexpose one side, properly expose the other side. The one tip you wanna keep in mind here is if you manipulate anything about these lights, you're gonna to have to re-meter. So if I put a flag in front of one of them, if I move them forwards or backwards, all of that is gonna change how much light is actually hitting my object. So every time you make changes, if I move my object back, if I move my lights, or I put a different modifier in front of my lights, I'm gonna to have to re-meter every time I do that. That's the very basics of how to use a light meter, set it up, get two to one lighting. You really need to kind of play around with a light meter to get really comfortable with it. But thanks for watching. I hope you stay tuned and come next time.
Star Date, Star Log, 3020. I don't like Star Trek, I don't know. Hot dog water. Yeah. No, but I... Where was I gonna start? Now I can bring... I feel like I wanna lasso something. Whoops. I...